Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we'll unlock the book Albion Seed, Four British Folkways in America. Gypsies who are known for their wandering lifestyle, but Americans love moving the most. They believe it's normal to move to new places for jobs, lower taxes, or a better environment. Americans don't mind moving at all. They love it. It's said that on average, an American moves to a new place of residence over 10 times in their lifetime. Americans love moving houses because they have inherited their ancestors' spirits. There was a famous slogan among the American ancestors who immigrated from Britain to North America, where there is bread, there is my country. Therefore, in the Americans' view, where there is a better life, there is their homeland. But what else have modern Americans inherited from their ancestors? Let's learn from the American historian David Hackett Fisher's book Albion Seed, which explores four British folkways in America and the influence of each on modern America. In the earliest historical records, Albion is the name of the island of Britain, which is also an elegant name for England. Just as Europe is named after Europa, a Greek mythological figure, Albion is the name of Poseidon's son in European myth. Albion was a giant and a hero of his time. He established his own country on an island and helped his people gradually multiply. In his memory, his offspring named the island where they lived Albion. Fisher argues that culturally, most Americans are Albion's seeds. This is because the four British folkways of early North America are the most significant determinants of today's American liberal society. This book introduces those four folkways and helps us identify four cultural strains that early English immigrants created in North America. The author of this book David Hackett Fisher obtained his doctorate in history from Johns Hopkins University in 1962 and has been a professor of history at Brandeis University in Massachusetts. In his book Historians' Fallacies Toward a Logic of Historical Thought published in 1970, Fisher expresses his discontent with historical studies of that time. This book paved the way for the publication of Albion's Seed. At age 70, Fisher won the Pulitzer Prize for History for his book Washington's Crossing. The book we're discussing today Albion's Seed has generated a lot of criticism and questions for Fisher. Some people think he's an arrogant aristocrat with a racist attitude. He's even received a death threat. Nevertheless, his innovation and contributions to historical studies are significant and his talent is widely recognized. Now, let's learn about Albion's Seed in four parts. We'll introduce America's four British folkways by looking at four significant immigrant groups. The first group of immigrants, Puritans. The second group of immigrants, Cavaliers and indentured servants. The third group of immigrants, Quakers. The fourth group of immigrants, Frontiersmen. When you think about the early English immigrants in North America, Mayflower and Thanksgiving may come to mind. Yes, 102 English Puritans sailed on the merchant ship Mayflower to North America in November 1620 to settle in a new land. However, cold weather and poor diet caused diseases that threatened their health and safety. Fortunately, the indigenous people of North America sent them daily necessities and taught them how to fish and raise turkeys. As a result, the immigrants reaped a good harvest and obtained enough food to live. To appreciate God's gifts and the Native Americans' help, these English immigrants held a three-day carnival, the first Thanksgiving Day. American people still celebrate this important holiday, which always falls on the fourth Thursday in November. However, in Albion Seed, Fisher regards this group of early English settlers in North America as outliers. As he defines it, the first true immigrants were the Puritans who escaped from eastern England to Massachusetts Bay between 1629 and 1640. In these 11 years, about 80,000 people left England for Ireland, the Netherlands, Rhineland in Germany, and even the West Indies. About 21,000 chose to settle in North America in what would become Massachusetts. Why does Fisher say the first immigrants in North America were the Puritans? Most of them said religion was the main and only reason they sailed to the New World. Most of them were English Puritans who were being persecuted at home. Most of the Massachusetts immigrants came from eastern England where religious life was 